any questions or anything you have about the homework or assignment or anything that is relevant to this course before we start the topic so last time we talked about the origin of magnetic field and we saw that magnetic field is produced when there is motion of charged particle we saw magnetic field due to single charge and we also saw magnetic field produced by wires carrying current we saw different configuration of <coughs> wires carrying current we saw this straight wire okay carrying some current i magnetic field at any point near this current is given by this formula b is equal to mu naught i over 2 pi d okay so that's the distance and i is the current we also saw current in a loop okay you can have multiple loops say we have n number of loops and this loop each of the loop is carrying current i then the magnetic field at the center of this loop is given by <coughs> mu naught n i over 2 r r is the radius of this loop and n is the number of turns in the loop and also we saw this kind of configuration called solenoid okay so this is solenoid and there are n turns in this solenoid and this solenoid is carrying current i okay it's carrying current i so the magnetic field at the center of the solenoid okay is given by mu naught n i over length of the solenoid so that's the length so that's from the last time so today we talk about we will talk about magnetic field of a bar magnet you guys might have seen a bar magnet when you place a bar magnet near some metal like iron usually iron not other metals it attracts the iron okay you have you might have seen the the magnetic stickers that you post on the fridge so that has magnet so what's the origin of the magnetic field in the bar magnet we know that magnetic field is produced when there is a charge moving but if you have a bar magnet you don't see any charge moving in the bar magnet okay but what causes the magnetic field in a bar magnet if there is no charge moving in the bar magnet what causes the magnetic field that's the question okay so you know bar magnet has two poles north pole and south pole and if you put some iron pieces nail or uh, paper clips it will attract the iron nail or paper clips okay. it's because of the magnetic property or magnetic field so the magnetic field of the bar magnet is due to the motion of electrons so we need to think about the atomic structure of a bar magnet when we think about the magnetic property of a bar magnet so so bar magnet has let's see that's the pin two poles again and in order to find the magnetic field of a bar magnet what you do is you sprinkle some iron filings around the bar magnet and you will see this kind of pattern so these curved patterns are 
magnetic field lines. Okay? And the magnetic field lines usually originate from North Pole and end to the South Pole. So if you put a compass needle, so the compass needle will point in this direction. Okay? The south of the compass will point towards the north, and north will point away from the north. Okay? And if you align more and more compass needles, you will see that the compass needle will end to the, uh, to the south pole. Let's see if I can show you the picture of what I'm seeing. Where is my... like this one. Okay. You see there, if I put a compass needle near this bar magnet, the south will point towards the north and north will be away from that. Okay, if I put it here, you will see this kind of pattern. And if you put here, you will see the bar magnet will align like that, like that. So you will see a pattern like this, okay? A curve pattern. It's going from north and ending to the south. So the magnetic field of a bar magnet is Let's say that's the north, that's the south. It originates from north and ends to the south. Oops. So that's the magnetic field of a bar magnet. So what's the difference between the magnetic field of a bar magnet and electric field of a charge. We also saw the electric field of a charge. Okay, so if you have a positive and positive, they will repel each other like that. So that's the magnetic field of two poles, two charges. Here, south and north are two poles. If you have a positive and negative, the magnetic field, would, uh, the electric field would be originating from positive and ending to the negative, like that. Okay, like that. So this is the electric field, and that's the magnetic field. We haven't talked about the origin yet. We are just showing how the electric fields and magnetic fields look like. <clears throat> so what's the difference, okay, between a uh, magnetic field and electric field? Or a magnet, magnetic field produced by the magnet and electric field produced by electric charges. So the main difference is you can have an isolated charge. You can have a single positive charge, okay? Or you can have a single negative charge. So if you have a single negative charge, you will have electric field like this, okay? Pointing into the negative charge for negative charge is pointing into the charge. And if you have positive single positive charge, the electric field lines will be pointing out of the charge. But in the magnetic field or magnets, you cannot have a single pole. Unlike the charge, you cannot have just the north or just the south. So if you want to get a single pole and you break this magnet, okay? If you break the magnet into two pieces, 
So this will again become negative uh, north pole, and this becomes south. Okay, so this will become north, and that will become south. And if you break this further down, this part will become north, and this part will become south. Okay, no matter how small you break the magnet into, you will still have two poles. There is, is it is not possible to have a single pole in the magnet. Okay, so monopole is not possible. Unlike in the charge, you can have isolated charge. You cannot have isolated north pole or isolated south pole. So now let's talk about the origin of magnetic field of a bar magnet. So to talk about the origin of magnetic field in a bar magnet, we need to talk about the atomic structure. We know the atomic structure of um, any matter. Atomic structure means how the atoms are formed. Atoms have a central nucleus and it is surrounded by electrons. And the electrons revolve around the atom. And also, electrons spin in their own axis. Okay, so let's say that's the electron. Okay, in addition to revolving around the nucleus, it also spins in, or, in its own axis. Okay, so it can spin in two ways. One is it can spin counterclockwise, okay, counterclockwise, looking from above, let's say. It spins like this, then it's counterclockwise. No, this is counterclockwise. And it can also spin clockwise. So there are two ways electrons can spin. Either counterclockwise or clockwise. Okay, either this way, uh, this way or this way, two ways. So when they rotate counterclockwise, we denote this by an arrow pointing up, and this is called spin up, okay, for counterclockwise. When they rotate clockwise, we denote this by this down arrow. We call this spin down. And, and that is, And it's the spin up and spin down that originates the magnetic property of a magnet. Okay. So in a bar magnet, these spins are aligned in the same direction. So usually if you have a, a iron or something, some other kind of metal, the spins are randomly oriented in uh, different directions like this okay so they will be so they will have different directions that means there is no net spin okay it's it's uh, pointed everywhere so when there is no net spin that means there is no magnetic property exhibited by the object. But if you have an object, let's say if you have an object, and if the spin are pointing in the same direction, okay, if all the spins are pointing in the same direction, then this exhibits magnetic property. So it has magnetic property. So usually in a bar magnet, these spins are oriented in the same direction. That's why they show the magnetic behavior or magnetic property. Whereas in case of a piece of iron, you'll have these spins in different directions. Okay. 
Now, in a in a in an object, usually we denote the regions that have a particular spin direction by this kind of uh, area, which we called magnetic domains. Okay. So the net magnetic field or the net spin, I mean, the net spin, I mean to say, the net spin in this area is pointing in this direction. Okay. So you have like lots of spins here, but the net is in this direction. And here also you have lots of tiny, tiny spins in this area, but the net spin is pointing in this direction. Okay. You add up all the spins, it will be pointing in this direction. In this one, the spin is pointing in this direction. Okay. Again, you have lots of tiny spins here, and when you add up all those spins, the net would be pointing in this direction. Okay. So this particular area with this particular spin is called magnetic domain. Okay. In case of non-magnetic material or the, the material that doesn't show any magnetic behavior, the magnetic domains have different orientation, different direction. You see they are or, uh, oriented randomly. So this one doesn't show any magnetic behavior. But somehow if you uh, align the magnetic domains in the same direction, then it becomes a magnet. So for example, here I have unmagnetized iron on the top. The magnetic domains are randomly oriented. They are everywhere. Or in other words, you can say the spin are oriented in different directions. And somehow I align the spins in the same direction. Now this becomes a magnet. Okay. So in order to make a magnet, what you need to do is you need to align the spins in the same direction. And how you do that, it's pretty straight easy to do that. You just wrap the iron with um, a wire and then pass current to the wire. The wire, the, the current will align the spins in the same direction. Okay? And that's how you can make a, um, a magnet. So for example, let's see if we can show you a picture of that. Here, just like this one. Here. So you wrap a wire around a nail and connect it to a battery. So the, there will be a current in the wire, and that current will align all the magnetic domains in the same direction. And that's how you can make an, an iron nail a magnet. So when you do that, so basically again you align the magnetic domains in the same direction, like this one. Okay. So in the unmagnetized iron, these domains are pointing in different directions, and when you magnetize that, they will point in the same direction. Okay. So that's the basic origin of. A magnetic field. Now, when you break this iron nail, what happens is you still have this domains pointing in the same direction. So this side becomes south, and this point becomes north. Okay. In other words, you can also say that. In that case, all these electrons are spinning in the same same direction. Okay, they are all spinning in the same direction. That's why it's a magnet. So the top one is not a magnet because in the top one, the electrons are spinning in different directions. One is spinning this way, the other one is spinning that way, the other one is spinning 
that way. So they are spinning in random direction. When they spin in random direction, you don't get the net magnetic property. So that's about the origin of magnetic field in an iron or iron uh, uh, a magnet. How about Earth? Earth is also kind of a magnet. Okay, Earth also has magnetic field. So what's the origin of the magnetic field of the Earth? Hmm? Yeah, so it has this molten core that has iron. So most of the, the core of the Earth is made up of iron and it is spinning its own axis. And because of that spin, it has net magnetic field. Okay? So the magnetic field of the Earth comes from the spinning of the Earth or the spinning of the molten magnetic uh, molten uh, iron that is at the core of the Earth. Okay, and so you can model the magnetic field of or the the Earth as a big magnet. Okay, so that's the magnet and the magnetic field of earth is it's originating from this is the north pole of the magnet and ending to the south pole okay north pole south pole so the north pole of the earth's magnet is on the south pole geographic south pole so you have this geographic south pole and that one is geographic North Pole, okay? The actual South Pole, actual North Pole. But the magnetic North, the North Pole of the Earth's magnet is on the side of the geographic South Pole. The uh, South Pole of the Earth's magnet is um, on the side of the geographic North Pole. But we call this magnetic north pole and this one magnetic south pole. Okay, why we call this one magnetic south pole? Although this is the north of the magnet. Can you guys think of why we call this magnetic south pole? So this Earth's magnet has North Pole on this side and South Pole on this side. Okay, that's why you see the arrows are going from North to South. Okay, again, the arrows always go from North to South. But we call this, we don't call this geographic North, I mean, uh, magnetic North Pole. We call this magnetic South Pole. The reason is if you take a compass needle and put a compass needle here, the, nor the, the north needle of the compass will point that way okay? and south points that way. So that's the north of the compass needle and south of the compass needle. That's why this side is called magnetic south pole. This south pole is the direction of the compass. Okay, so just like in the charge, two opposite charges attract, they attract, and two like charges repel. In the same way, in the magnets also, if you have north and south, and if you bring a north charge near a, a north pole near a north pole, it repels. Okay, and unlike char unlike poles attract. So these two poles attract. So when you align this, when you uh, put this magnet, uh, magnetic compass in this axis, this north pole will attract the south pole of the magnet. So that's why the south aligns towards the north and north aligns towards the south. Okay? And because it, this compass points towards the south, so this, we, this is what we called magnetic south pole. 
and again this is the direction of the compass needle. Now, the magnetic north pole and the geographic north pole do not coincide. Okay? They are not on the same line. There is this small angle difference between these two. Okay? You see here, these two do not coincide. That means if you use a compass needle to um, travel towards the north pole, you will not get exactly at the north pole. You will be about five degrees away from the North Pole. Your compass needle will take you somewhere here. If you want to go here, then you need to adjust your uh, direction by about five degrees. Any question? What's that? It's not iron that is magnetized, but you can magnetize anything, any metal. The, the necessary condition is you need to have the spin in the same direction. If you could uh, align the spin of a copper in the same direction, you can uh, make a copper also, an, uh, also a magnet. But it's difficult, more difficult to align the spin of a copper than an iron for some reason. It's easier to spin uh, align the spin of iron in the same direction. Even oxygen, you can make uh, oxygen a magnet by aligning the spin in the same direction. Oxygen also has some magnetic property because you can align oxygen in the oxygen uh, electrons in the same uh, direction. You can also uh, produce the magnetic property in water. If you could align the spin of electrons in water in the same direction. Okay, not just iron, but any anything you any metal or any non-metal can become a magnet if you can align the spin in the same direction. Now, one interesting thing about Earth's magnetic field is because of this Earth's magnetic field, we are protected by lots of harmful rays coming from out, out of the, or from the sun, okay? Like it, div, uh, it deflects all these um, unwanted particles like beta particles, uh, other alpha particles, okay? So this magnetic field acts as a shield to protect the, the the human beings in the earth or uh, organisms in the earth, on the earth. But the thing is that this magnet is becoming weaker and weaker every century. Okay. And it's uh, in, in certain time it flips. Okay. So there is a period during which this this um, uh, poles flip. So maybe in 10,000 years, this will become North Pole and this will become South Pole. There is a flipping of uh, poles every uh, 10,000 years or so. And it, it, it's also getting weaker and weaker, okay? I don't know by how, how much, but it's becoming more and more weak. So, so the magnetic field deflects most of the charged particles that are coming from outer space. Okay, so that's about the origin of magnetic field of a bar magnet and earth. So now let's talk about interaction between two magnetic fields. So let's say we have an external magnetic field, okay? We don't need to worry about the origin of that. So let's say we have this magnetic field pointing from left to right. It is denoted by letter B. 
So sometimes we use this kind of arrows to denote magnetic field, and sometimes we use this thing to denote the magnetic field. Okay. If we have dot in the circle, that means the magnetic field is coming out of the screen. Okay. So in this case, the magnetic field is coming out of the screen. If we have something like this with the cross mark, that means in this magnetic field, the direction of the magnetic field is pointing into the screen. Okay. And we do not care about what is producing the magnetic field. We just know that there is a magnetic field. Okay. There is already some magnetic field there okay, in the space. And now, let us say which one you want to choose. Let us start with this one maybe. So we have this magnetic field. And in this magnetic field, let us say there is an electron or let us say proton, start with the proton it is moving this way. What will happen to that proton? We know that whenever a proton is moving, it will also have some magnetic field. Okay, so now this proton will also have some magnetic field because it is moving, because it has some speed. Now we have two magnetic fields magnetic field that is already present in the space, this magnetic field, and this proton also produces its own magnetic field. So those two magnetic fields interact. They either attract or repel. Okay. So we have two magnetic fields. And because of the interaction of the two magnetic fields, this proton will be either attracted or repelled by this magnetic field. That means this proton will feel some force. Proton feels force in the external magnetic field. Okay? This is the external magnetic field. Just like when you, uh, let us say you have, a you have an electric field you place an electron or proton in this electric field, this, uh, this proton will feel some force because of this electric field. Right? This electric field will exert some force on that. Tell me which way the electric field exerts the force on that proton. You should know that. Which way this proton would be pushed to the left, exactly, so to the left. It will feel some force which is given by Q times E, right? So no, not to the left, sorry, uh, let us see. If it is electron, it would be to the left. Electron would be to the left, but proton would be to the right. Either it's either to the left or to the right, but depend, depending on the charge, if it is negative, it would be to the left, and if it is positive, it would be along the direction of the electric field. Okay. Because the electric field is originated at positive side. Right? It is coming from positive side. That means if you put a positive charge here, these positive charges will push the, this positive charge away. So that, that means the force would be along the direction of the electric field. If you put a negative charge here, these negative charges will push this negative charge away. So that means the force here would be in the opposite direction of the electric field. Okay? So that is just the review of electric field. Now let us talk about magnetic field.
So let's first write the formula for the force felt by the charge, and then we'll talk about the direction. So the force felt by the proton due to the magnetic field is given by, it depends on charge, okay? it depends on speed, and it depends on the external field. Okay? Greater, bigger the charge, more is the force on the proton or on, on any charge. Greater the speed, more the force it feels. Greater this magnetic field, greater is the force. Okay? And it also depends on one more thing, that is sine theta. Okay? So theta is angle between V and B. So let's see an example. Let's say in this case, the proton is moving at 2 times 10 to uh, 6 meters per second. And this magnetic field is 10 Tesla. Uh, 10 would be really, really high. So let's say 0 0.1 Tesla. And it is a proton. So let's find the force. So force is Q. Charge of a proton is 1.6 times 10 to negative 19th. Coulomb, that's the charge. Speed of the proton is 2 times 10 to 6 meters per second. Magnetic field is 0 0.1 Tesla. Sine, what's the angle between V and B? <coughs> 90 degrees, yes. So V is down and B is to the right, so that means this is the angle, 90 degrees. So sine 90 degrees. So that will give us the magnet, uh, the force due to the external magnetic field. So 1.6 times 10 to negative 19 times 2 times 10 to 6 times 0 0.1, 3.2 times 10 to negative 14 uh, force. Force is Newton. So that's the force felt by the proton in the magnetic field. But force is a vector quantity, so we also need to write the direction of this force. So what's the direction of this force? Now, right hand rule. Okay, so in this chapter, you use this right hand rule a lot. So point your fingers towards the uh, to the velocity direction of velocity, and then curl them around, co curl them towards B, or curl towards B, and that will give you the, and then your thumb would give you the direction of the force. Okay. So again, point fingers towards V and curl them towards B and then the thumb would give you you the duration of force. And this applies only to proton, okay? Pos positive charge for positive. If you have a negative, it would be opposite to that. Whatever you get here, you flip that, that would be the duration for negative, okay? Opposite of that. We'll see that also in a next question, next problem. So for this one, let's look at this case here. So in this case, V is down, oops, magnetic field is that way. So point your fingers down and then 
So somehow you need to rotate your finger so that this side can be curled okay, towards B. I cannot curl this, this side. I cannot do like that. So I need to point my palm towards B. So curl towards B and my thumb would be the force. So in this case, uh, which way is the force? Point your fingers down and then curl towards B. Which way your thumb points? Hmm? Yes, out, exactly. So it would be out. So for out, we write this symbol. This is the symbol for force. Okay. So out of force is out of the screen. Okay, so let's look at see if I have a question on the worksheet. Okay, so let's look at this problem, uh, problem number two from the worksheet. So in this case, a proton, let's, let's say it's an electron, okay, because we already did for proton. I want to show you different case. So let's say it's, it's an electron. So an electron moves with the velocity of that along the positive x direction as shown. What is the force of force on the electron if the magnetic field is 2 Tesla applied to the positive, zero, uh, positive y direction? So in this case, our magnetic field is pointing this direction along y direction and this the velocity is along this direction okay so for part a force is given by q v b sin theta and this is a magnitude so whether it's a proton or neutron uh, electron you use the same value we don't need to worry about the sign so 1.6 times 10 to 19 coulomb. Speed is given 3 times 10 to 6 meters per second. B is also given to Tesla. And sine, so this theta is angle between V and B, okay, this V and B. V is to the right and B is to the to up. That means the angle is 90 degrees. So that gives me one point six times ten to minus nineteen times three times ten to six times 2. So that gives me 9.6 times 10 to negative 13 Newton. And we also need to find the direction. So for the direction, point your fingers towards V and then curl towards B. Okay, curl like that. And then your thumb would be the force. So in this case, your finger, your thumb would be pointing out of the screen. Okay, that would be your direction of the force. But since we are dealing with the electron, you need to flip that. Okay. So the direction would be into the screen. For a proton, it would be out of the screen. But since it's electron, it would be opposite of that. So that's that. Let's see number C, uh, the third one. Second one is uh, similar to the first one. So now we have magnetic field along x, y plane. Not just along x or not just y, along y, but it's along, um, along this direction. So the magnetic field is now pointing along this direction.
that's the magnetic field and the particle is moving this way along x direction so how do we find that so there are two ways to do this one one is by using the vector approach i don't know if you guys learned vector multiplication in physics one if not you can do in this way so first you need to find the magnitude of this this magnetic field okay see you have this mag this formula has we are using this formula and this formula has this b and this b is not a vector this is a magnitude okay here you are given this vector quantity that's the vector quantity but this one is the magnitude of that so to find the magnitude of a vector if you have this vector let's say you have a vector f is i f x plus j f y how do you find the vector um, the magnitude of that in other words you have a vector whose component is pointing in this direction let's say 2 newton on this direction and 3 newton on this direction what's the magnitude of these two vectors yeah pythagoras theorem so you, you need to use this component square plus that component square okay that's what you need to do same thing here so if i want to find b i take the x component so this is x component square that and take the y component which is this one square that and take the square root of the addition so that will give you the magnitude of b which would be 1.22 squared plus 3.32 squared and square root of that where is my square root so that gives me 3.537 tesla now you can use the formula <coughs> force is it is electrons so 1.6 times 10 to negative 19 coulomb speed 3 times 10 to 6 meters per second now magnetic field is that okay so 3.537 tesla and sine so what's the angle we also need the angle between v and b this angle that's also a little bit tricky but not so much tricky if you know the vector rule how do you find this angle so you have yes so you have see this this is 3.32 this is 1.22 and we want to find this angle and we know tan theta is y component over x component no sorry i did opposite this one is 3.32 y component x component is 1.22 so tan theta is y component over x component okay so theta would be tan inverse of 3.32 over 1.1 which is tan inverse of y component 3.32 over x component y.22 so that gives me 69.8 so theta is 69.8 degrees okay so that will give us the force I will let you guys finish that but I want to show you the direction so how how to find the direction in, the, in this case the same kind of thing we do here okay so we have <coughs> the x we have the velocity in this direction magnetic field in this direction okay point your fingers towards the velocity and then curl towards magnetic field 
okay, called towards magnetic field, your thumb would be pointing out of the screen. Okay, so it's out out of the screen, but it is electron, so we need to flip that. When you flip that, the duration would be into the screen. Okay, again, same rule here. Point your fingers to the V called towards B and see which way your thumb is pointing. If it is electron, you flip your thumb, that gives you the duration. Okay, that's all for today. We'll <coughs> continue this next time. If you guys have any question, I can answer your question. <coughs>